Hey everyone, it's Mr. Montgomery again. Today we are on lesson 4-8. And that is going to be on page 189 in our Robot Turtle books. Let me write it a little bit bigger for you. 189. This is the page that we are going to be on today. If you're not on this page, well, make sure you pause the video. Make sure you're all set, then hit play. But if you're already on the page, we're going to keep on rolling. And today we're really going to be working on solving story problems. And that means we're going to be solving story problems that go all the way up to 20. And we might be adding, we might be subtracting. So we really have to focus on what words that they give us and what numbers they give us. So let's go ahead and start reading this first one. Some books are on a shelf. Do we know how many books are on the shelf? We don't. That's a little bit of a question mark. Aiden puts four more books on the shelf. Huh. So we have the number four. Is there anything else special that you heard in that sentence? Aiden puts four more books on the shelf. Well, this word more is usually pretty special. And we're going to talk about what this word means in just a minute. Okay. Now there are 12 books. And we're going to start with this number 12 because it's definitely important if they're telling us this number. How many books were there on the shelf to start? Now, we know that the first number, we don't know. It's a question mark. And then they give them four more. So when we hear the, uh, the word more, do you think that's going to tell us to add or is it going to mean subtract? When we see this word more, it's usually going to mean that we're going to be adding numbers together to make a bigger number. So if we're going to make a number sentence, we need a blank, a plus sign, a blank, our equal sign, and then a spot for our answer. So we don't know how many we start off with, so we got to leave one of these spaces blank. And then he gets four more. You know, I'm going to put this four in the first spot. I like to, whatever uh, part they give me, I like to make sure I always write it in the first space going around the plus sign here. And you're going to see why in just a moment. Okay, and now there are 12. So when they say now there's 12, they're saying this is the total. So where do I put the total in an addition sentence? Does it go next to the plus sign? or after the equal sign. It's going to go after that equal sign. So now we have 4 plus blank equals 12. So right now we have our start number, right? We do not have our jump number. We're missing that. And we have where we're going to end. Okay, now the reason why I like to always put one of the parts we know in that first space is that it keeps it the same every time we do it and we can always make sure we have our start number okay because if you put it in the jump space it's going to be a little confusing and I don't want anyone getting confused so let's go ahead and make a quick number line 12 11 10 9, we have 8, 7, 6, 5, oh, <laughs> wrong number there, 5, 4, and 3. So, we're going to solve this just like we've solved these problems before. We are going to put a dot on our start number, right? So, dot on 4. And then we're going to put a dot on our end number, which is 12. And now to find the answer, all we have to do is count the jumps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So what is our missing number? Well, it's 8, because we jumped 8 times. And you can just recount the jump, the bumps, if you uh, happen to forget. 
So then down here where it says there were blank books to start, well, there were eight books that we started off with. All right, now let's go to the next page, page 190, and let's do another practice one together. All right, everyone, here's page 190. And... Uh, there's only one problem on this page, unfortunately. Oh, man. So we're just going to kind of go through it together a little bit. We'll do it in steps. Um, especially since they set this up differently than I would have, and I want to make sure no one is confused. All right, so we're going to do number one in parts. Uh, we're going to start off doing it together a little bit, and then I'm going to leave you guys to finish this on your own at a certain point. But I'll let you know when that happens. Okay, let's read it together. Cal rides his bike on Monday. He rides 8 miles on Tuesday. Oh, okay, so now we know how many miles he rode on Tuesday, so we need circle 8. He rides 14 miles in all. Oh, so we see that number 14. And we also heard some special words in this sentence. See if you can pick out the words. He rides 14 miles in all. What are the special words in this sentence that tell us that we're going to add or subtract? It's the words in all. Whenever we see in all, it's always going to mean we need to add every time. How many miles did Cal ride on Monday? So we don't know how many miles he rode on Monday, right? It's a big question mark. We know Tuesday he wrote 8, and we know in all is 14. So in your book, this is how they set it up. I would have done it the other way, but it's okay. So we have a plus sign in the middle. For where it says Tuesday, we have the number 8. And then we know that our total is 14. So I'm going to just rewrite this a certain way. So that way it looks a little bit more familiar. But it's going to mean the same thing. What I would have done is just move where the 8 is. So that way it would be 8 plus blank equals 14. And the only reason I would do this is so that way this stays as our start number, right? Then we're just missing our jumps. And we still have our end number. See, I... And re if you remember what we've learned a while ago, we can add in any order, right? So it doesn't really matter where the 8 goes. I just prefer to keep it first so that way it stays in the start number spot. Okay, and that way we're we always know we're just looking for our jumps. That's it. That's the only reason I moved it. So don't let it, you know, <laughs> ho I'm hoping this didn't just break your brain. I'm hoping I'm not breaking your brain here, okay? So down here, we can, of course, um, we could solve this a couple different ways. We could use our trusty number line. And I'll also show you guys a different way we can solve this. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick number line. We have 14 down here. Then we have 13, 12, 11. 10, 9, and 8. I'm stopping at 8 because that is the smallest number I have. And I stopped at 14 over here because that's the biggest number I have. We don't need anything else. So now that we have our start and end number, I would like for you to figure out how many jumps and write it down on our answer spot. Okay? Go ahead and figure out how many jumps. Okay, if you're still working on this, pause the video, take your time. If you're all done, let's check your work to make sure you did it correctly. Alright, so we're just going to start at 8 and count our jumps going over. 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now I know that eight plus six will give us 14. Now, if you want to be fancy about it, you could also think of subtraction as helping us solve this. And you might be thinking, Mr. Montgomery, you're crazy. It says addition. But if you remembered, we can always use a related fact to help us solve any problem we want. We could also look at it as, uh, OK, I'll show you a quick example. We'll draw 14 circles. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So I have 14 circles. And the part that we knew was 8. So I would just take away 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can see I still have 6 circles right here. So it gives you the same answer. Now, just, just, uh, <laughs> I'm only saying this to just remind you guys that we can always use related facts to help us solve. But if using addition this way, it works for you, that's okay. You can stick with it. But if sometimes using a related fact can help you, then feel free to use it. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Still just use what is the easiest for you to use. I'm just making sure you guys know all of your options, okay? So let's go ahead. We'll do just one more together on the next page, and I'm going to have you guys do some independent work on your own. All right. So I'm going to read problem number two to you. I will circle all the important things with you, but I'm going to want you to solve this on your own afterwards. Okay. So Maggie wrote nine pages of a story yesterday. Okay. Oh, that's pretty special that she wrote nine pages. She writes some more pages today. Hmm, do we know how many? No, we don't know how many pages she wrote today. She writes 15 pages in all. Oh, we got that number 15. That's pretty important. And what words do we hear that's really special too? She writes 15 pages in all. Well, the words in all. And those words always mean that we're going to add. So we have we found all of our important pieces. And we have this space over here in this rectangle for you to show your work if you need some working space. So now that we know we're working with the number 9 and 15, and we need to know in all... And if she wrote 15 pages in all, what space would that go in? It's going to go first or last. All right, I won't say anything else. Just going to be very careful with the wording sometimes. Go ahead and try to solve this one on your own. Okay, if you're still working on this, no problem. Pause the video, take your time. But if you sped through this, and maybe you're a very quick mathematician, let's go over together. So first, we need to set up our problem. We have blank plus blank equals blank d blank. We have a whole bunch of blank spaces. Okay, so yesterday she wrote nine pages. Where would this go? I think it's going to go in the first space. Uh, the second space? Or is that going to be our answer space? So, me, personally, I would put this in the first space. And this is going to be our start number, right? If we're using a number line, it's our start number. Okay. Then, so we have one part, because that's what she did yesterday. Uh, she writes some more pages today. So do we know the other part? 
No, we don't. Remember? It was a big old question mark. We have no idea. But she writes 15 pages in all. So where's that number 15 going to go? Is it going to go in the space next to the plus sign? Or is that the total number of pages that she wrote? So when they give you a number and it says in all, that is our total. So 15 has to go in our answer spot. So now we have 9 plus blank equals 15, which is our end spot, right? For you going to use the number line, that's what's going to be at the end there. And down here, I can make a little number line. Starting with 15, then going backwards to 14. 13, 12, 11, and 10, and 9. I'm going to stop there because 9 is my smallest number, and 15 is the biggest number. I have both of them on the number line. I don't need to worry about anything else. But let me use a different color here. All right. So we have our start number, which is 9. Put a little dot. And our end number is 15. All we need is our jump number, right? That's all we need. So we'll just count our jumps. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So six jumps, which means nine plus six equals 15. So today she wrote six pages. All right. So if you already wrote out the problem in the box, that's fine. You'll have to rewrite it here. But, of course, you always could. And we would just say 9 plus 6 equals 15. That's it. All right, now I would like for you guys to try 3 and 4 on your own, but I will read them to you before I let you go off on your own, okay? So it says Gemma has 6 games. Chris has 13 games. How many fewer games does Gemma have than Chris? Now think about that word fewer. Is that going to mean more or less? Okay, number four. Lily has seven fewer ribbons than Dora. Lily has 13 ribbons. How many ribbons does Dora have? Now this is a tricky one. So Lily has seven fewer ribbons than Dora. And Lily has a total of 13. So they're saying that Dora has more. So Dora equals more. I'm giving you a big hint right there. So if we see more, you think it's going to be a plus or a minus right here? Just saying. All right, but be very careful. Take your time with it. And that's it. Go ahead, try number three and four on your own. And, um, of course, if you're confused, make sure you let your teacher know. But I hope that you guys are getting this and it's uh, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> and as always, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.